everybody. Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. Today we're going to start a series where we make this vintage traveler's notebook. I'm making one for friends as a gift as they're moving away and I hope that you'll join me as we make this notebook. This one's made from a manila folder and if you follow along we'll be folding it so that it has tuck spots, pockets, places for games, a notebook that we'll be making, and lots of other little pockets and things to tuck games and conversation cards for them to do in the car. So I hope that you'll join me as we make this vintage traveler's notebook. Come on. All right, let's do a little flip through of a travel notebook in the vintage style that I plan to give on friends who are moving to Florida. So here it is, and it's made with a base of a file folder, just one of those regular manila file folders. Um, so it's all folded up and ready to go. And I have on the front a little brass tag that says log on it. And it's secured with an elastic with some beads and a little key there. So to open it, you just pull that off. And it's got a couple little pages here. So the first page has two pockets and this has a license plate game map. So as they're traveling, they can mark the states where they see license plates. Uh, it's always a fun game to play. And then in the next pocket, I have some Mad Lib type stories and I'm calling them Mad 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 Libs. And so they just have some stories with the words that you fill in. There's gonna be two of them going, so they'll be able to play when one's driving. And so those go right in there. And then I also have a little paper clip here for them to be able to attach and keep any ephemera that they collect along the way or keep any important papers that they might want to have. And then on the next page, I have a little bits of travel diary here. So this is a little pull out notebook. Um, and when you open it up, there are, um, I don't know, six or eight pages of coffee dyed paper for them to keep some notes on. And then there's some more travel quotes in here. And this pocket just has some little fake vintage money that I thought was cute to go in there. And then there's another paper clip here in case they would want to keep anything else ephemera wise. And then the last page has two fold out pockets um, that were made with envelopes. And in each pocket is a set of three cards that have conversation starters or would you rather questions, would you rather always forget who you are or always forget who everyone else is. So I thought these would be fun for them to do in the car when they don't have anything else to talk about, it's gonna be a long trip for them. And then they can put them right back in there. And this pocket has a different set of three um, would you rather or conversation starters in there. My favorite being, would you rather die by zombie attack or shark attack? Discuss. So those will be fun. And then the last part of the journal is a big pocket right in the top there that I put a nice big tag where they can keep track of their expenses and they can keep track of important dates and there's a calendar in there too for them to look at. So that is the whole travel journal and I hope that you'll go through it with me and create one of your own and at the end of the last part there'll be a surprise in there where you can get some freebies so I hope that you create along with me. Okay, so we have our manila folder that we're gonna start with, which will make the base of our journal. And mine um, has a tab you know, on the right-hand side here. And you have to decide where you wanna put that because we are gonna be folding up from the bottom to make the pockets um, at the bottom of the journal for the base. So I would like that tab to kind of stick out. I like that detail. Um, so like I could either, you know, start with things this way and fold up from the bottom so that the tab would be on the opening flap, but I think I like it at the back. So I'm just gonna turn my folder inside out so that when we fold it down to get our base going, the tab will be at the, the back there. I kind of like the way that looks. And then we can fold up from the bottom and not have to worry about our pocket affecting the tab there. So the next thing you need to do after you decide that 
is decide how big you, your pockets, you want your pockets to be at the bottom, which will also determine how big your folio will be when it's ended up folded. So if you're going to put papers in, um, you might want to choose, you know, your length or your width of your papers so that, you know, you can just fold them right in there and not have to trim them down. Um, I don't think I'm going to put any papers in this journal, but I still kind of like the size of the pocket here. So if I make my um, travel notebook eight and a half inches tall, I still have this little bit at the bottom, which let's see, I don't even know. Let me grab my pencil here. I don't even know how much that, that is, but I like this, what this size looks like here. So it looks like it's a little over three inches um, for the pocket size there. And I think that'll work good because a eight and a half inch um, journal will be a nice size to hang on to. Um, it's not quite the travel notebook size. I think they're about eight and a quarter, but I could do it there as well, depending on what we want here. So that pocket's a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll try that. Since I'm not going to be putting any papers in, I'm not going to need to trim anything down. So maybe we'll go with an eight and a half inch um, tall notebook and see what that does for us. So now that I have that decided, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, our score lines so that we can fold up the base of the journal there. So I'm just going to mark it on both sides here so that when I pull out my scoreboard, we can do that. So since I have that tab there, it kind of makes it hard for me to work that way. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to see, I want it eight and a half, eight, excuse me, eight and a quarter inches tall. So I'm going to do that right there, which for some reason does not look like, oh yeah, maybe it is right there. So I'm just going to make a nice score as far as I can here on this side, and then we'll flip it around and do the score on the other side. Now this one's not gonna be, I wonder if I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna try and do it this way because that tab's gonna get in the way. And I'm just gonna line it up again and come right down to the bottom there. Okay, so now, if I remember what I was doing, I wanted it to look this way. So our pocket then will get folded up from the bottom. And I'm just gonna give that a nice crease. And I actually don't like that as a bone folder. Okay, so now we have our pockets ready to go. Um, so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, finish the base of the notebook so we have our pages so what i'm going to do is i want the middle to be a page pocket so i'm going to take the front flap and fold that over to the middle because that's where i want to have the beginning of my notebook and give that a nice crease and then the same on the back Actually, I'm going to start from my little middle page here, and I'm going to fold that down so that you don't have to excuse me if my head is in the way, but I want the middle of the page to meet the edge of that flap. So you can see I folded this down so that these two ends are aligned, but are flap end still sticks out. So this is going to be, and you will notice too, or at least on my, I'm not sure, you know, it's probably because the edges aren't even in the beginning. The back edges don't match up quite exactly, but that's okay, I don't mind that. So um, I'm just gonna crease everything down real good. here so all my creases are creased up real good now what I've decided I want to do for um, this notebook is I'm gonna leave these two pockets here um, and the on the first page and then what I'm gonna do is um, when we put it all together I'm gonna actually attach this back and front flap here so that we have a nice pocket in the top for some stuff to go down into 
And then on the back side, the back page, so it's really only just gonna be a two page flip here. On the back side, um, I wanna do some flip out um, pockets. And then also I'm gonna do two pockets here. So because I'm gonna do a flip out over here, I'm actually gonna cut this flap off and I'll probably use that for my second pocket up here. So let's see, I think I'm gonna try to use my, so I'm gonna unfold it so that I can do all that. Let's see if I can do it with my cutter. Let's see how that goes. I might be able to do one side of it anyway. And I'm just gonna line that up. So maybe if I fold it like this, that will work. And then same thing, I'm just lining it up with the crease as best as I can. And coming through there, okay. So now if I fold it back the way I wanna have it going, you can see that my last page now just has one pocket here with nothing here and um, eventually we're going to put this in as a pocket. So I'll need to cut that down um, to make that work. But before I start doing all of that and piecing everything together, I wanna be sure that my base is well distressed. So I'm going to go through and make sure all my creases are stressed, distressed, excuse me, all my edges are distressed. We are gonna be covering this with some paper. So I've picked out since this is a travel notebook for friends who are actually going to be traveling because they're moving, I've picked out some pages um, that I think might be fun to cover to cover everything up with. So I want the edges to be distressed before I put any of my cover pages on so that it'll be nice and distressed and vintage looking. So I'm going to start doing that just with my Tim Holtz here, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, this is Tim Holtz, Ranger Ink Distress Ink Vintage Photo. And all I'm gonna do is for all my pieces, I have to put a page under here, otherwise it gets ink everywhere. I'm just going to distress my edges and just make sure that I get the, um, the edges real good to knock off the sort of bright vanilla color there. And then all around the edges. So I will speed this up. and be back in a minute. Okay, a couple quick notes that I wanted to say uh, before this got away from me was um, you don't have to ink the entire thing. So when you fold it up and we glue our um, or sew our pockets down, obviously we're not gonna need you know this inside to be inked. So you don't need to worry about that. And then also on the back area where we're going to attach these two things together, you know, the inside doesn't need to be inked. Although um, I do like to make sure the tops are inked. So um, when you go in for a, you know, into the pocket there, you can see that it's been inked up there. Um, and you can also do the same thing with the tops of these if you want to, you know, just to, just to give them a little bit of more, you know, distressed look from all angles if you want to. Um, because these are gonna be sewed down, I don't really think we need this one too much, but I'm just gonna add a little because you know you have to distress everything i think that if that's you know the one thing i've learned about doing this kind of stuff is it all should be distressed <laughs> okay so that's going to go like that now the next thing i want to do before um, i sew things down as well is i want to start covering things up so um and then we'll be building our base as well so um the one thing I did want to remember here is that I want this to be a pocket and um, I think I'm going to have to cut it down as I look at it. 
Um, so I'll have to go back and sort of re-ink this piece before I put it down. Um, but I do want to start start um, making, let's see, I'm trying to decide which way I like that. I kind of like this little edge that goes like that. I may have to do the other side because I kind of like the way that looks. Um, but we want to do that first. We want to cover everything first before we start um, really putting all of our embellishments on and sewing things shut so that we have it all together. So let me first cut this down. And actually, I'm just going to mark this. So I think I want it, I do want it this way because I liked the way that looked. And let me just make sure I have it in the right spot here. So I'm going to have to cut off just a teeny bit. And I can maybe. I'm just going to mark it with my pencil here, kind of where I want my cuts to be. And then I'll have to, to re ink this one, of course. Since I want it going the other way. And actually, I think before I even do that, I do want to cut this pocket down a little bit since this one's so high here. Um, I think I want this one to be a little bit smaller so that there's um, some, you know, space between them and there's some space at the top of this one. So I think I'm going to cut off maybe right here. Let's see what that does. It gives us about an inch in between. I think that'll be good. And I'm not measuring. Yep, I think I like that. So I have a little pocket up at the top here and then a nice big pocket down at the bottom. And if anything sticks up over the top, I, you know, that'll be fine too. So let me ink this up real quick while I'm thinking of it. And since the back is already inked, I don't have to worry about that little space that might show. <laughs> Maybe on the bottom, but that'll be sewn or glued down, so I won't need to worry about that. Okay. All right, so now we have these base pieces together, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start covering everything. Um, I did say I wanted to do some flip out pockets on this side, um, but I want them to go on top of um, the background paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and start covering everything. So you can pick your papers and I just picked um, a whole bunch of you know maps and different travel things. Um, they're gonna be traveling to Florida. So I tried to do some things with some states and different things like that. So, um, and I thought this one might be fun for one of the big pockets. I don't know if I can cut it down to kind of have the UR here, it's really big. So I'm not sure that's going to work exactly the way I want it to, but I pulled it out just to see. All right, so when you're covering your um, folio here, what you want to do, or what I'm going to do, is for these places where the, they're notched, I'm, I kind of over inked them um, so that I don't have to cover them with paper and you know I might use labels or something like that so for example um, you know this one I'll cover like this so that there's some space here to you know put something on when we're embellishing so um, let's see I have to decide what I want my front one to be and actually I have these pages that I probably use for some embellishing so I'm just gonna put those on the side because they're not gonna be my cover papers um, and let's see, I think I can do them long, so I could probably get a couple of pages covered. So, <clears throat> let's see, actually this one might be fun for my front cover, since they are going to be traveling from Pennsylvania to Florida. This will kind of, you know, cover that whole thing right there. I think that's what I'm going to do for the front one and then we'll decide what we're gonna do for the middle one. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure them and cut them all so that I have them ready to go. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna give myself about an eighth of an inch um, around the border um, so that you can see that distressing. So I'm gonna line it up where I want it here. And I can't, of course, tell 
how that should work. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to give my eighth of an inch at the top and the side so that I know where to cut it at the bottom, just making sure I don't cut off Florida. I don't want to cut off Florida. Okay, so I have a little mark there to, so I know where to cut. And then I want to do my width cut here the same way. So I'm going to line up my eighth of an inch over here and then mark it for an eighth of an inch here on this side. And then let me get my cutter and we'll see how well I did. And I'm going to cut the long one first because I might be using more of this for some other of the back pages. And I have this one at the edge here. And I'm gonna cut that off. So let's see how we did. And I think I, I might decide to um, round all the corners as well. Okay, I think we did good here. So now you, you'll notice that um, I do have up at the top, because of the notch in the file folder, there's a little bit of a notch there. Um, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my corner rounder and I'm gonna round these corners. And then if there's any sticking over after the corners have been rounded, didn't really seem to be working right, then we can cut that off. So we'll put this here. And it looks like there might be just a tiny little bit on the edge there. And I think maybe what I'll do is I'll wait to cut that off until we've glued it down so that I know exactly where um, I need to cut it. And I'm just gonna cut most of them right now because um, I wanna ink these too. I wanna distress these around the edges before I actually glue them on. So I'm just gonna mark them. So I'm just putting a very light one so I know that this is page one and this is my page one that I've decided that I wanna put right there. So I'll put this aside and we'll start on the inside. So now remember, um, we're gonna have this back tied together when we're done. So for these, um, let's see. So maybe what I'll do for an inside page. Actually, I think I like the other. some maps and some states. Wait, I think I like these two together. This is the hardest part of the whole thing, probably. So, okay, the states kind of go, this is the states right side up. So probably I wanna cut it that way. And then this one I can cut long ways because it's just a pattern. So we'll do the same thing. I kind of like those two together. So what I'm going to do, actually I should take this out, get my pencil. So first let's mark this. This is gonna be two and three. And then we will put all these other papers aside so that they're not in the way here. And let's mark two. So same thing, I want to have about an eighth of an inch from the, um, creases and from the edges. So I'm just going to mark that. And then the same thing at the bottom. Now this one also has a notch. So when I mark this one, so this is how tall I need it to be. And I need this edge to go within an eighth of an inch of this edge. So we'll have that um, sort of open tab again for some embellishing. So I will put that right there. And then, um, and actually, you know what we can do, because these are pockets, I only need to cover a certain amount if I'm not going to do the, um, the pockets the same color. And actually, I think I like that idea. So maybe what I'll do is we'll cut two pieces for the back and then we'll cut the pattern for the bottom. Yeah, I like that much better because then the pockets will sort of be distinct as well and it'll be easy to recognize that, hey, these are actually pockets and something can be put in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So 
So let's start measuring over again. <laughs> because they don't need to be that tall since um, they just have to go under, you know, the flap of my pocket there. So let's kind of measure from this one and they can be the same height, but they probably will be different widths since this one has the notch and this one does not. So I'm gonna put this under about an inch under the flap there so that I know that it'll be nice and covered. Give myself the eighth of an inch or so that I want and then mark an eighth of an inch or so from the top and I think I'm going to cut this one down to that to start with because then I can see um, sort of what I'm going to have to do for the rest of it <clears throat> okay so that looks good here that'll fit nicely there now because this one has the notch on it um, we have to decide kind of how to handle that. So let me start with this one because that'll be easier and get this one cut off. So this is our number three. And I'm going to give myself the eighth of an inch from the crease there. About to cut that. So we can cut that one off and put that aside. And I am going to round the corners on this as well. Um, but since you only see the top, we only need to round the top two corners of this. Okay, so I'm going to put that one aside. And I've got them marked. I marked my threes. All right, so now let's do the two here. So for this one, I think we're just going to do the same thing and I'm going to leave the the label available um, at the bottom here so I'm just going to mark it the same way I did before but because I have this little cut out I need to be sure that I take that into consideration so I'm just sliding it down a little bit lower because this is the edge that I really want to go an eighth of an inch from so we'll mark that And let's just check and make sure we did a decent job there. We did. And then this will be the same thing. I'm going to round this corner. And then once we glue it on, we can check to see if there's any additional we need to, to cut off there. So once again, I'm just going to mark this with a two so I know where this is supposed to go. And round my corners. Ooh. There we go. And put that aside. All right, so the next thing is to do our pockets. So this has a weird cut on that side. So let's go ahead and measure the pockets. Now this is gonna kind of be the same thing. Um, I am going to cut the number three first because that one is um, more straightforward than our number two is gonna be. So I'm gonna give myself my eighth of an inch on both sides here mark it on the bottom and since these are going to be the same width here I can cut the whole thing across I don't know if I'm going to have enough for number two yet because I do want to cover a little bit more of that pocket <clears throat> but we'll see all right so that is our pocket there and I'm going to mark myself my eighth of an inch And just make sure I did okay. Erase my pencil mark that you can still see since I'm bad at that. And then I'm gonna mark this one as well just so I don't get confused when I start putting them on. Okay, so that one we can put aside. So now number two, um, we kind of have a little bit you know, of this weird cutout again, but I really think I'm not gonna be bothered by that. Let's see. I'm going to mark my eighth of an inch on the side here and I want this one to go all the way to the edge so our um, piece at the top is only going to come into here but our pocket I think I want to go all the way to the edge and once I do this um, because I'm cutting it longer than maybe I might we can always trim it down if we don't like what's going to happen there okay so let's see 
was a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, but that's okay. And I think I do like that. Yep. All right. So this one, let me mark with this with number two. And again, we do have a little bit um, of overflow here. And you know what? I should probably decide if we're going to, I think I'm going to round the corners of these, but I'm only going to round the bottoms so that these will kind of flow together. I don't remember if this was two or three, but so we have our piece at the top here and the top corners are rounded. And then sort of when it comes down on the pocket, I'm just going to round these bottom two corners so it'll kind of flow together in that way. But I'm going to leave the tops square. So this is number two. I'm going to put those aside and then I'm just going to round the bottoms Oops. of number three. I'm really having a hard time with this, this rounder for some reason. Okay, so that page is done. So now let's go on. This is going to be four and this is going to be five. And actually I need to do a six as well. Okay, so for four, now remember we are going to have um, another um, pocket here, but I am going to go ahead and cover this whole base um, so that it's ready to go. And actually I'll probably measure something matching for these two pockets so that they'll you know match when they go over. So I'm going to actually mark this one, I'll just mark it four as well because they'll be such different sizes it'll be easy enough to tell where they need to go so all right so let's pick some more pages i think i want different pages on this one and i think i might since this page one is going to have this here i think for page six i'm going to use sort of the second piece of this so that they they go together i think i like that idea so that they kind of match up. So let me do number six while I'm at it so that we can make sure I don't forget that because that would be my luck. I would have a thought and totally wreck it. So I'm leaving my eighth of an inch and then let's do the same thing. And once again, because there's this flap on the end, I'm gonna need to cut it at the piece where the flap comes in. Okay, so I'm just making sure that part is right. Good, good. Now I need to make sure I, where's my mark? Oh, there it is. Sometimes it's hard to see the marks that you make with those pencils on a patterned piece of paper. Okay, yes, I like that. All right, so we'll mark this so that we remember, round the corners. All right, and put that one aside. All right, so now we can go back and do four and five here. And I have a couple sheets left, so I think I like this gray one. And actually this one might be fun for the pockets somehow. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm going to do the back with the map maybe and do the pockets with this. Now, since this one doesn't look like it's quite wide enough to do the whole back, I may turn it on its side. Um, and I kind of like again that, you know, we got Florida showing here. So maybe what I'll try and do, this might get covered up when we start putting in our fold outs. I do it this way oh, I could do it the pockets you know what it's not gonna matter too much so I think I'm just gonna turn it on its side because most of this base page is gonna be covered up uh, because of all the pockets and different things like that so it'll just be showing that there's a map coming through and that's really my goal so I'm gonna do number four here first and once again for this side I don't have to cut I don't have to cut the whole thing because it's not going to be covering the whole page. But for not for the 
page five here, I am gonna have to cut the whole thing. So I think what I might do is do this one first so that I don't end up cutting off part of the page and wasting it. So let's do that first. So I'm going to, once again, leave my tab open, give myself my one eighth of an inch. I can't see my, where's my, it's right at the edge there. And we'll cut that piece off first. And that fits nice. And then we will cut down from the top and cut off that little piece for the background on page five. <clears throat> okay, that works perfectly. And there's our Florida, so that might be nice. Might not get covered, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how things go. And once again, this thing's giving me trouble. I wonder if it needs to be emptied. Okay, let me mark this. Um, I'll mark this the way I want it to go. There's number five. All right, now we can use this page again and not have to worry about how much we're cutting off. And I'm gonna give myself my eighth border there. And I'm keeping all of my scraps for now because you never know what you might wanna use for your embellishing. So I'm gonna keep that there. And then we're gonna mark this one for our width over here. <clears throat> and just check and make sure that looks good. that and once again I'm gonna just round the tops of this one and we can put that one aside and then I'm going to measure up my pockets with this one with this page so they will probably be about the same size I think one might be a little bit, this one might be a little bit smaller, but let me go ahead and mark this pocket. Since this is the bigger one, that's the one I'm going to do first. And I'm just going to mark that side there while I have this on. But I'm going to cut my length first. And actually what I may do, just cut enough for two. And I'm cutting it a little bit big. But um, I want to keep this page as whole as I can because if I want to use it for something else, I'll be able to do that. Let's see if I can line that up. And just cut that off. Okay. So now, um, oops, we had it going this way. So, yep, that looks good for this one. And then this one, my, let's see, we measured that good. Let me erase my pencil marks. Number it. And listen, if you can keep it all straight without numbering everything, hey, more power to you. But I usually cannot. And I just realized I put that upside down because I rounded the wrong two corners. But that's okay. I'm going to round all four of these. Since it's a different page, it can have a little bit of a different look. So that'll be that page. That'll be number four there. And then this one will do the same thing. We will round all four corners once we get it cut to size. So... Let's see, I really like the um, 
round there. So I wanna keep as much of that on, I think, as I can. So I'm gonna cut from the bottom. So I'm gonna give myself a mark there. And we'll just give ourselves a little mark here. see how we did. That looks pretty good. And I will just so these kind of match. So I have my four rounded corners there. I'm going to round my corners on this one as well. Okay, and this one once again has a little bit of a notch, but based on our cutting, we're not gonna have to worry about it and that will show nicely, which I like. So that's gonna go like that. And I think now I have everything cut out. I'm not mistaken. So now we can start gluing things on. So. Um, same thing. I haven't really attached anything. I am going to do some stitching and so I want the stitching to be on top of the paper. So I'm going to put my paper down first. So I'm just going to go back and match all of my numbers up and glue things on. But before I do that, of course, and I bet you can guess what I'm going to say is we're going to ink everything. We're going to distress it. So same thing as you did before. And if you're using light paper like I am, um, just be real careful when you're distressing around the edges. So just hold it tight and use a light hand to go around the edges. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and do all this and I'll come back with all my pieces and we'll talk about gluing. Okay, I'm back. And you can see I've got all my cover pieces distressed nicely. Um, I even kind of went into the insides a little bit to just really give it a nice um, vintage feel. So next thing I'm going to do, I was thinking I was going to sew these on to the folder to the base there, but I think what I'm going to do, because I want to be sure the pockets are as big as possible, I don't want to, you know, come in too much so that I have, you know, not a lot of room in the pockets. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch all of these first and then we're going to glue the pockets and glue around. So before I glue anything together though on this, once again, um, I do want to add some embellishments and this is just a little brass metal piece. It says log with some numbers in there. And I thought that would be a nice um, little addition to the front. But before I do that, um, I wanna be sure this is attached to the card. And if my pockets are glued up and sewn up, it's gonna be harder for me to get it on there. So I'm going to make sure this is attached first. And obviously um, I want this attached to my front paper somewhere here, and I may even kind of put it off to the side so it's real noticeable there. Um, but I wanna be sure I am, you know, doing that first. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around this and then we're going to attach this brass piece and then we're going to come back and glue everything together. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go stitch around all of these. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't really decided if I'm going to do a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch, but I'll decide that and I'll come back and show you what we've got. All right, back again. So now I've stitched everything around the edges. Um, I decided to do a zigzag stitch. I don't know why, I just seem to, I don't know, like the way that looks a little bit better. So I did a zigzag around everything. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my um, front cover here. So I'm going to, and I may do some more embellishing after this, but because I know I want um, this little brad or this little brass piece to go on here, um, I do wanna make sure I get that in before I get anything else done there. So I am running away to get my brads because of course I forgot to bring them over. And I just have these little, I think they might be Tim Holtz um, brads. So I'm just gonna find ones that are brassy looking. Some of them are more brown than others. 
and I'm just gonna pick out two that I can find. And these are pretty little, which is nice. Okay, so these I think will match my, match my, the sort of the color of my brass uh, plate there too. So I think that'll be good. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is first I'm going to glue this on and I am going to use my beacon glue. This is a beacon three-in-one glue. I think it's also called Fabrifix, Fabri-Tac. All of those things are, I think, used synonymously. So first I'm gonna glue this on to make sure I have this down where I want it. And I'm gonna glue right to the back of my page. Um, and I'm gonna put most of it on the stitching because that's really where I wanna be sure I have nice coverage. But then of course I will put some down in the middle, just a little bit there to go down. And make sure we have it right side up. And I'm gonna put this right where I want it there. And I like to leave my um, stitching ends just for um, sort of a shabby look, but I am just gonna cut them down a little bit so they're not quite so long, especially on the outside. All right, so that's gonna be nice there. So now I have to decide where I want this. And I could, um, punch some holes. I have a hole punch that I could use to punch holes for these brads, but I'm not sure I even need to. Um, so I'm just going to play around with this a little bit until I decide kind of where I want that. Um, I think I kind of like it sticking out this way. And I think I'm going to put it towards the bottom because I do think I might do some more embellishing up here with some labels and, and things like that. So I think this is right where I'm going to put it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to mark it with my pencil a little, um, but then I think, well, you know what, I, maybe what I'll do, I have this um, paper piercer that works pretty nice when I put signatures and books and things like that. Whoa, I don't dump everything. Um, so I think I'm going to use this to punch my holes. So I'm going to make sure I open up my uh, pockets because we don't want to punch through those. And then I'm just gonna find where I put my marks and just give them a little, we don't even have to go real big here because um, the brads will do the job. So put that back and let's go ahead and put these through. And when I open the brads on the back, I'm just gonna try to make sure that I have them turned um, up and down so that they won't stick out the sides or something like that, especially on that end. So now you see when we fold up our pocket, that's gonna be nice and hidden there. Um, the only other thing that we might wanna do, and uh, we'll see about that in a minute, is I think I'm going to cover the edges of those brads, maybe with some washi tape so that you don't have to worry about when you're putting you know, anything in that pocket for it to get stuck on so that that'll keep that nice and flat. So let's go do that. I'm just gonna pick out a washi. And I need better storage for my washi, but this is all you got right now. So I'm just gonna pick something that, I mean, nothing is gonna show through this, so it's not really gonna matter. Um, I'm just gonna Maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll pick something that I know will stick pretty well. I think this is like a, this is a Scotch washi tape. So I think this will probably stick pretty good. Man, that took forever. Now I'm not sure, this will stick pretty good, I think, but um, I just don't want it to uh, show on the edges. So I'm gonna press it down. I'm going to probably add just a couple, make sure it's nice and flat. And I'm trying to put my straighter edges 
towards the outside so when we fold that up you won't see it let's get rid of that okay so there we go you won't even see it but we have our nice brad that we added our brads with our brass to the top there so that's that and i like the way this is starting to come together so now what i need to do is i need to go through and match up my papers with my sides and i need to glue all of them together um before we do that though i am going to go ahead and glue my flaps down actually i'm going to do the backs first and then flap it down so um, let's go ahead and do two, three, and four. We're gonna glue those down first so that we can then fold this up and not have to worry about you know sticking anything down in, in there. And if you didn't get to do that, um, that's really not that big of a deal because they should be pretty easy to you know stick down in if you didn't, didn't do it ahead of time. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I try to make things <laughs> as easy for myself as I can. So, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with four. The glue seems awful slow today. I'm going to trim some of these edges. All right. Okay, now we have all of our major pieces glued down here, and this corner doesn't want to fold right. I may trim a little bit of that off and re-ink that before we glue, so let me go ahead and do that. So I don't know if you noticed here, when I, I guess when I cut this one off, I maybe didn't quite get enough here at the edge. So um, I probably should do this with my straight cutter. So I'm just going to try and cut just a teeny little bit more of the edge of that off so that I won't have a problem folding it. And um, because we've cut our paper, I'll just check it real quick. Um, and actually I see that it looks like I cut it a little crooked maybe, which is why it's having a problem um, closing right. So. Ugh. And let me re-ink that a little. Don't forget, every time you cut, <laughs> you gotta re-ink. All right. Let's see if that works a little bit better. Yes. That's gonna be much better. Okay. So looking good all right so now the next step that i want to do is i want to glue our pockets down um, and then we can finish gluing everything else on so all i'm going to do is for the gluing i'm going to glue at each seam and along the edge of this one and along the edge over here so that's that's it pretty simple here and i'm going to use my my fabric fix um, as well for this just because i want it to be i want to be sure that it you know it holds real well 
and um, I'm going to try not to go too far past the sides because once again I want to be sure that my pockets are big enough to hold you know the ephemera and embellishments that I want to do there so I'm just going to try and keep it as close as I can to the seam I know it will smush out a little but um, that's why I'm keeping it as close to the seam as I can because I know it's going to smush out a little and I'm just going to do like I said the very edge over here and the very edge over here and my edges might be smooshing out some glue so I'm just going to be real careful when I fold over that I have my seams lined up and press them all down and the glue around the edges you might notice is going to seep out a little so just make sure you wipe that off real good so that it doesn't stick to everything else and um, if you use a brad like i did um, on the front and it's pretty close to the edge you need to be sure that you hold that together while it um, while it sets while it picks up all right So we'll just give that a minute to make sure everything's holding. And then there we go. So now we have our pockets. And this one's not quite adhered yet, so I probably shouldn't have even showed you that. <laughs> All right, so while those continue to dry, um, I do have them, I think they're, you know, catching and they're, together, but I do want to make sure they are good and dry before I do anything else with them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and finish gluing um, all the pieces on. And while I'm at it, I think I will glue my separate pocket down here as well. And actually, I've just had another thought and that's why I love doing this so much. I think that this might be fun as just like a little a little belly band. So it doesn't actually have to be a pocket. It could be, you know, for something else to go in there. So I may just glue these on two sides so that something could slide down, you know, even into the pocket if we wanted it to. But it still uh, kind of has a good look. So I'm going to still think about that, but I'm going to go ahead and glue everything else on because I know I want all that stuff to go together. Once again, I just got to match up my pieces with the number so that I know where I'm doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, you guys, we're getting there. So now we have everything covered. We're still not completely um, put together, meaning we still have to attach this to this um, so that we have our big pocket at the top there. And we still need to put our pocket flaps on here. And we still need to put those on here. Um, but we're doing good. And I think based on um, some of the ephemera I wanna do, so, the, so what's gonna go in here is um, I'm gonna put some games that they can play on the road, maybe a journal so that they could actually, you know, keep a diary or something like that. And as I thought about what to do maybe with this, um, I had mentioned that I thought a belly band might be fun. And I'm still thinking that. And I think that if I put it up nice and high, 
we could tuck in maybe just like a, a little notebook that would come over the top and the bottom that could be pulled out and then written in and, and things like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Now, the one thing I didn't decide is if I want to put hinges on this, because if I just glue it down, which I certainly could do, um, I want to be sure there's enough space um, behind it to actually slide in a notebook with a couple pages in it. So I think what I might do is I might add um, a hinge to that belly band so that it goes in there um, nicely. So to do that, let's see if I can find some leftover hinge material. Okay, so this is just a little piece of um, cardstock, of scrap cardstock that I have. And it looks like it's about three quarters of an inch wide, which is also um, just about perfect in terms of size. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut um, two pieces of this, just the size of um, the whole entire piece. So to do that, I'm not even gonna measure, I'm just gonna line it up and I'm gonna snip, snip it off with my scissors trying not to actually cut the card itself. <laughs> so we need two of those. So um, when I do the other end, because of that little um, curve there, I'm gonna have to cut it just a teeny bit shorter. So I think what I'm gonna do, actually, I don't think I am. I'm gonna cut it, we'll cut it down. So I'm gonna cut it the size of the whole back of the card. Okay, and then what I do is I fold them in half and they are a little bit easier because they're so small to use the scoreboard uh, first for. So move that out of the way. So I don't know, let's see if we can do three quarters of an inch on here. Where did I put my scoring tool? Oh, here it is. Okay, so if we put it on here at about three quarters of an inch and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to go on three to make my little score mark here so that it, and this is really just to make sure it's easier to fold. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's good if it is a little bit aligned, but like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. And all this is going to do for us is give us some space behind this belly band. And once you have your folded pieces, what we're gonna do so that they don't show is we're going to just taper them a bit. So when we glue them down, the open part of the hinge is gonna be glued so that it's you know facing the inside of the belly band. So our fold is gonna be towards the edge on both sides. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little triangular cut on both sides. so that it will kind of hide down in there and you won't see the hinge. So now for this other side, we're gonna have to do that a little bit different. So let me just do this edge that's nice and neat there. And then for this one, because of that little notch that I like and want to keep there, I just need to be sure I make my, um, I make my cut a little bit different here. So, I'm just gonna try to, actually it should be going this way, so I'm just gonna try this. And I think I'm gonna have to cut it a little bit more, down just a wee bit more, to make sure that that's gonna be nice and hidden too. And I still think I need a little bit more, goodness. All right, much better. Okay, so now to get it started, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue each side of the hinge on here. And I am getting towards the end of this bottle of glue, I believe. And I'm really gonna try to make sure I get the edges as good as I can for that. And once again, remember you want your folded part of the hinge 
towards the edge. I'm gonna wipe off any excess there. And let's do the other side. Oh my. Got bubbles coming out of my glue. It must mean I'm getting towards the end. Okay, same thing. Make sure your folded edge of the hinge is towards the edge of. I'm going to get my top on here before my glue goes all over the place. And we'll let this dry before we. Um, before we attach it to our book. So let's just take a look at what we've got so far and talk about what's next. So I've covered all of our um, spaces that are gonna be shown in the book. So we have our front cover, we have our inside pockets, and these are nice and dry. And we have our next pocket over here, our back side where we're gonna add some pockets, and then this side here, the back cover which we'll probably just do a little bit of embellishing on since you can't see it. So once this is dry, we're gonna take this and we're gonna glue it in here. So now you can see my hinge just gives me just enough room to play around with when I wanna add things to it. So you're not, um, it's not too close to the paper when we glue it down. So I'm still gonna just kinda, I just really want this to be nice and dry before I put that in. And I wanna be sure I'm not gluing my hinge together, <laughs> which it looks like I kinda of was there. So yeah, watch your stuff when you're letting it dry so it's not gluing everything together. That glue's good stuff, but you don't want it where you don't want it. Um, okay, and then the other thing that we need to do is we need to um, create our pocket here in the back. Now, I am trying to decide I may sew this and it's gonna it'll add another stitch here um, and I can't do it right on the seam actually maybe I could do it on the seam actually I think I could yes I could do it on the seam so I think what I may do is put a straight stitch all the way down here um, so that'll make our pocket and I'll I want to do that so that um, it really stays together. I wanna to be sure that that pocket doesn't come apart. And if I know, I know if I stitch it, it will do that. So I'm gonna be right back and I'm gonna stitch that pocket together and we'll show you that. And then we'll put our hinge on. Okay, back again. And I put our stitch in. I just ran a straight stitch right down there so it doesn't really take away from my zigzag on my papers. And you can see now it's nice and attached. Plus, we have this beautiful big pocket up here where we can add tags and um, things like that in there. So we'll get to that when we do the embellishing. So the last piece, before we move on to um, the second part, I'm gonna have to stop the video, is I'm gonna add our belly band here, um, right there. And I'm just gonna once again use my glue And I'm going to very carefully this time, because once again, I don't want my glue um, gluing together my hinge. I'm just going to very carefully put it on the edge of the hinge of each side. And then I'm going to press this down right where I want it, which I want it kind of close to the top and I'm going to hold that down for a minute and put my glue cap on at the same time multitasking crafters very important and I'm just going to take a look because I want to be sure it's not gluing any parts of the hinge together and I'm just going to hold this in place for just a minute until it takes, until it goes together, and then we'll let this dry. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk about what the next part will be. So um, you can see as we've been adding some things, our book doesn't, you know, doesn't stay shut nicely. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an elastic closure to this, um, kind of like... Um, 
you know, a traveler's notebook would have. So we're going to add um, a rivet right in the middle there, and we're going to add some elastic so that you can just pull the elastic around it, um, and it'll keep it real easy together. And then the next thing we're going to do as well is we're going to start adding our pockets that open up here um, because we want them to be able to hold more of our games and things for the road trip. So this is it for part one. I hope that you'll come back and join me for part two. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, please subscribe so that you can get notified for the next video. Thanks. See you next time.